When I received a tip-off about this story last year, I couldn't believe what I was being told. Twelve months of investigating, though, has not only confirmed it, but also established it's much worse than first thought. Tonight, 60 Minutes, The Age and the Sydney Morning Herald expose what could be one of Australia's largest human trafficking operations. What's certain is that vulnerable Asian women are being coerced into enduring shocking conditions as sex workers. And even police admit not enough is being done to help them. Meanwhile, the crime bosses are making hundreds of millions of dollars and rorting Australia's supposedly strict border security with impunity. Cairns in tropical North Queensland is a haven for tourists. But if you're checking into this hotel on the Esplanade, there's more on offer than a pool and cocktail bar. You didn't tell me how much. And half an hour. One yeah. A few hours south in Townsville, you'll find the exact same thing Hi, at this motel. Do you need massage sex? Sex? Yeah. yeah. What do you have? Uh, massage sex. And further down the coast in Brisbane, the guests behind these doors <laughs> aren't here for a holiday. Yeah. Half an hour, one hour? Uh, one hour, 400 feet. There's no doubt it's uncomfortable to watch. But what you're seeing is more than just a sleazy transaction. Behind the doors of suburban motels is a hidden story of organised crime and human exploitation. And it's happening all over Australia. Tonight, in a major global investigation... You pay boss money in. ..we go undercover to expose an international human trafficking ring hiding in plain sight. They were moved like cattle across the country into different motels. We hear from the vulnerable women who are victims of the ugly trade. I had to work night and day. You just need to have sex. Bust the network, making a fortune moving women into and around the country. You've helped all these women come to Australia. You can do like for an organised No, 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 no. And reveal the ways they're making a mockery of our border security system. I'm flabbergasted that he's able to get into Australia. There's a motel, we think, just up here, about 100 metres on the left-hand side. That's it through there. Oh, it looks like a dive. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a key, key indicator. Um, yeah. Tucked away in a tiny corner of Brisbane's south, this looks like any other suburban motel. We just need to be a little wary here because they will be looking out for police, like you, I imagine. But closer inspection reveals the hallmarks of the motels police believe are used by serious organised crime syndicates and where Asian women are coerced to sell sex. They don't have any control over the clients or the number of clients they see. Uh, that's all pre-arranged and these people just rock up at their door expecting services. Detective Inspector Brad Phelps has been tracking suspected human trafficking operations for years. Does this strike you as the classic place where these sorts of setups are? Uh, absolutely. It's out of the way. It's, it's not in a, a really busy area. It encourages people who want to uh, utilise these services, gives them an opportunity to remain somewhat anonymous. He knows better than anyone how hard it is to shut them down for good. And he's a cop prepared to admit when he hasn't quite cracked the case. Well, are you surprised to learn that this syndicate activity, this trafficking, uh, this exploitation is still going very, very strong? No, I'm not surprised. And why not? Organised crime will continue to conduct this business while there's profit to be made. Brad and his team originally stumbled across what they came to call the Motel Sex Syndicate in 2019. Where'd you get the first hint that something like this was up and running? So the Major and Organised Crime Squad started looking at uh, complaints of illegal prostitution activities in North Queensland. As a result of investigating those complaints, we were able to quickly establish that there was a much more sinister and bigger picture behind this offending. 
So it became very apparent very quickly that the working girls um, were uh, being controlled and manipulated by people uh, outside um, of themselves. What emerged was evidence of an expansive criminal network profiting from human suffering. We were at very uh, lowest rung uh, with the sex workers themselves, and we soon worked out that they were being coordinated by district controllers. They had transportation coordinators, they had accommodation providers, and they were moved uh, like cattle across the country into different motels uh, where they were being exploited by these organised crime syndicates who were then reaping the rewards, the financial rewards for that work. You say the women were being moved like cattle. What do you mean? So basically they had very little control or no control over where they worked or how long they stayed in a location. So they were moved from place to place in order to perform work on behalf of these organised crime syndicates. The operation is as big as it is simple. Vulnerable Asian women are recruited and flown into Australia. Crime syndicates then advertise their services online along with multiple phone numbers. When a customer calls, they're directed to a motel where a woman under the boss's control is waiting. Paint for me, if you can, the picture of what a woman's existence is like if they've been trafficked, coerced, threatened into the sex industry in Australia. They may have been deceptively recruited in their country of origin. They have no idea necessarily that they might be coming into the sex industry. Or maybe they knew that they were coming into the sex industry. Then when they arrive in Australia, they discover that they're effectively in a debt bondage situation where the unreasonableness of what they're being asked to do is just, you know, um, way over the top. They're being asked to, um, you know, provide more services than they ever would have agreed to. What is the impact on a person of having to endure those sorts of conditions? Oh, this is, this is absolutely life-changing. Detective Superintendent Jane Crossling leads the Australian Federal Police response to human trafficking. She says despite the appalling situations they're exposed to, most victims don't ask for help. So if you imagine the, the tentacles and the networks that organised crime syndicates have, they are able to make a victim live in fear. Um, they don't have access to money necessarily. They don't actually have access to their identification documents, including passports. For some of the victims, they are here potentially illegally. So they're actually having that it's used as a threat to keep them in that ongoing uh, situation where they're actually being exploited. How much wealth, illicit wealth, are we talking about? You're talking hundreds of millions of dollars that are leaving Australia untaxed to go back to organised crime internationally. So hundreds of millions of dollars? Correct. To get a sense of just how brazen it is, we enlisted the help of undercover agents. So the undercovers are in the motel room a few doors down and the idea is they're going to use some burner phones or a burner phone uh, to try some of the other numbers we think are linked to the trafficking syndicate to see where that takes us. Using a hotel in Townsville as a base, our operatives prepare to pose as potential clients. Tools of the trade. Yeah. We start by going through the websites. Um, this number, I think, so if I Google this number... And looking for the specific phone numbers our sources suggest the syndicate is using. Give it a call. I guarantee you some of these other ads will, will, be, will be women linked to the same syndicate. Let's try this number, because we have that belief that it's... So do, do you have a, a burner phone? So what do you want me to say to yourself? I've seen an ad on TV or a mate's given me this phone number. I want to say you saw an ad online on secret... secret... <laughs> is free tonight? If they say no, you just say, is there any other girls in, uh, in Townsville? True to form, the call isn't answered by the woman in the ad. It isn't answered at all. And almost straight away, a text message comes through. GFE service is 15 minutes, $120, 30 minutes, $150. But this is obviously well, a pre-planned text. And then there's a massage. Address is the <laughs> motel. <laughs> Townsville. Boom. Motel. Immediately, we have a hit. Services for sale at a nearby motel. Critical thing for us is motel, syndicate, with, with you know, first phone call. 
look, we've cracked them. Mm. Um, so they're obviously operating with absolute impunity. Mm. Our aim is to get inside the motel to establish the woman there is in fact selling sex. Within seconds, our suspicions are confirmed. Hello. Hello. Our undercover Hello. leaves without completing the transaction. And one by one, we target the other numbers we suspect the syndicate is using. Hi, baby. Hi. Hi. How about my baby? How are you? <laughs> and behind every door is evidence of the operation in action. Um, so hold on. Do you need massage sex? Sex? Yeah. yeah. What do you have? Uh, massage sex, sucking, fucking. Yeah. All right. How much for? For half a one, one fifty. One and one two fifty. What our undercover operation reveals is undoubtedly shocking, but it'll come as no surprise to some in law enforcement. You see, they already know about it, and they already know who's likely running it. Our own investigation can reveal a key player is a Chinese organised crime boss called Bin Jun Shi. And what's even more remarkable is he's done it all before in another country, which raises some obvious questions. How is he getting away with it here? And why hasn't he been stopped? How do you feel to learn that Bin Jun Shi is running the same operation, perhaps even bigger in Australia? Well, I'm absolutely flabbergasted. I'm flabbergasted that he's able to get into Australia. For many months, we've been searching for the mysterious boss of a sex trafficking syndicate. His name is Bin Jun Shi, and he's a master at staying hidden. So we arranged to stake hey, him out. How are you going, Rod? Yeah, good, good. I'll tell a long story short. So we have a target of his name, we have a location, we have an original photo. Yeah. Well, we could start surveillance almost immediately. Mm -hmm. We'll try and flush him out. We suspect Bin Jun Shi lives in a high-rise tower in this apartment complex in Burwood, Sydney. It's the perfect place to hide if you're trying to keep a low profile, which is exactly what he's doing. But after weeks of watching, we catch a glimpse. This is the man we believe is running an illegal sex trafficking ring in Australia. But to understand what he's capable of, we have to travel to the other side of the world. Bath, one of the most beautiful cities in England, seems an unlikely place for a sex trafficking syndicate. But our investigation into Bin Jun Shi starts here. Recognise that person? Yeah, that's Bin Jun Zi. Bin Jun Zi. He's unforgettable. Why is he unforgettable? I dealt with him face to face. Uh, I sat across the table from him for four hours, interviewing him uh, about uh, sex trafficking and, and uh, brothels in the UK. Former detective Kevin Forrest investigated Bin Jun Shi 10 years ago. But the sordid details of that case and the traumatised women have stayed with him ever since. The girls who were actually employed to perform the acts were effectively prisoners. That's what they were. They, they, were, they were there to do that. Uh, they stayed naked most of the time or semi-naked most of the time. They never came out and the next thing we'd know, they would pop up in another brothel doing the same sort of thing somewhere else in the country. For more than 12 months, Kevin and his team of investigators tracked Bin Jun Shi's UK operation as it farmed women into suburban underground brothels. What does it look like? Sorrid is what it looks like. They were there to perform only one thing to anybody who came and paid it. That's what those girls' jobs were. That, that was all they did, uh, was, to, was to deliver that at the behest of the person running the house, who was also being run by a person elsewhere. Did you have any sense that you'd be operating across much of the UK when you began to unwind no. the syndicate? No, it's only when we started to look into it and we started to see the money come in from different different towns, uh, we realised that actually it's, a, it's right across the country. The syndicate was in no doubt where there's men, there's demand. Where there's men, there's money. And that money, loads of it, was leading back to Bin Jun Shi. So how did this place fit into the Bin Jun Empire? One of the other residents in another flat uh, called the police to, uh, to complain that there was a sound of a woman who sounded to be in distress. And that's when they found a, a girl who said she was there to provide massage 
services to, to people who are coming. But we've got the original uh, rental papers. Uh, we sent them off for fingerprints, and there's only one set of fingerprints that came back off that, and that was Bin Jun Z's fingerprints. The fingerprints not only confirmed his involvement, but it was the breakthrough the police needed to start raiding the other properties they believed were linked to the syndicate. How many sites like this were there around the whole of the UK? Around the UK like this? Yeah. Hundreds. Yeah. Hundreds and hundreds. Ben Jun Shi was arrested and charged with money laundering and running a network of illegal brothels. Confronted with the evidence Kevin Forrest had gathered, he pleaded guilty, was jailed for two years and then deported back to China. Then, incredibly, he was granted an Australian student visa. Within months of his release from jail, he was running a suspected sex trafficking ring in Sydney. How do you feel to learn that Bin Jun Shi is running the same operation, perhaps even bigger, in Australia? I am absolutely flabbergasted. I'm flabbergasted that he's able to get into Australia. It's unbelievable. Surely someone in Australia should have said, you're not allowed here, mate, you've just got out of jail in Britain. Yeah, I, <laughs> I thought that might be the case. I thought Australia was hard to get into. Uh, you know, I thought you, you, you did lots of uh, checks, you know, and you got a criminal conviction. When you arrive, they ask why. He certainly has a criminal conviction for running brothels, definitely, and he was deported. The fact that he's not only crossed the border, but seemingly set up the same human exploitation ring in the sex trade as the UK authorities shut down in Britain, what, what does that tell us? It, 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 it is just astonishing. I cannot explain that. Abel Rizvi is the former Deputy Secretary of the Department of Immigration, and he says Bin Jun Shi is proof the system isn't working. Why was not this man on the movement alert list? Why was he not refused using the extraordinarily powerful character provisions we have in the Migration Act? We plonk people on, on islands in detention camps, or at least did, yet an organised crime boss can fly into the country willy-nilly, seemingly. It seems to point to a real imbalance in the system. At, at minimum, an extraordinary level of negligence. But she is not the only one exploiting gaps in our border security. His network is linked to multiple migration agents who may not be directly involved, but who help Asian women lodge fraudulent visa applications. One of them is this man, Song Tao Lu. He's a Sydney-based federal government licensed migration agent who appears more than willing to scam the system in return for cash. With the help of a journalist posing as a massage parlour worker, we contacted Lou, asking for immigration advice. And straight away, he offers to lodge a false protection visa application designed for asylum seekers. For cases like yours, what you could do is to apply for a protection visa, and then you can get a bridging visa. A bridging visa can be used for about three years. Our fee is $2,500. When she questioned how she is eligible, Agent Lou revealed his secret trick. He told her the plan was for the application to ultimately be rejected. You are not getting that protection visa. You are just applying for the protection visa. What you will get is the bridging visa, which will allow you to work. A bridging visa with work permit usually lasts three years. The activities of these migration agents are... Um, reprehensible. Queensland Police Detective Inspector Brad Phelps is well aware of visa scams. How important a cog in this underworld of illegal trafficking, sex, China's organised crime are the migration agents? Well, they're a, a key part. I mean, if you don't have the, the, the working girls coming uh, or the victims coming to Australia, then you don't have the industry. So they are crucial in, in getting those um, people into the country. Without their support, the whole operation would fall down. But dodgy migration agents aren't the only ones. Education agents are also in on the racket. Working between Seoul, Sydney and Melbourne, this man, Duwon Kim, has helped Australia's sex industry apply for visa after visa for Asian women. And when we sent a Korean investigative journalist posing as a sex worker to meet him, he spent an hour explaining how he could easily bring her into Australia on a fraudulent student visa. You don't have to go to school. 
You can go once a week. It doesn't matter if you don't go at all. There are many schools like that. The schools close their eyes on attendance rates. There are many of those literally visa schools. He also claimed there was untold demand for young Asian women in Australia's sex industry. It's crazy because there aren't any girls right now. You will earn a lot. Why should Australians care that the visa system is being so rorted? Australians should care, one, because we are facilitating organised crime. We need to remember human trafficking is probably the second biggest global criminal operation in the world, only just behind drug trafficking. So we should care that we are being exploited by organised crime. But also we should care about what it's doing to Australian society. It is bringing in people who are going to become a permanent underclass in Australia. These are, these are victims. Victims who are scarred for life by their experiences in Australia. Looking back, it was all exploitation, everything. The female owner wrote this down on a piece of paper. Hi, my name is. I do natural oral, oral sex, 69, kissing. I do everything. It's difficult to listen to, but these are the words of a woman who was lured into Australia to work in this Melbourne brothel. A woman told me that the work in Australia is really easy there. She said there would be nothing much to do, just some massage and sex. So before arriving in Australia, I imagined things would be very neat and efficient. It's been several years since she worked under controlling syndicate bosses, and she now lives back in Korea. But what happened to her in Australia still haunts her. She's terrified of speaking out, but has bravely agreed to share her story. And we've reenacted the interview to protect her identity. I started working as soon as I went there. In the evening of the day I arrived, they didn't tell me anything and asked me to work straight away. My passport was as good as confiscated. I couldn't go out. I was virtually being locked up. She told us she was working in a karaoke bar in Seoul when she was recruited with the promise of earning more than $10,000 a month as a sex worker in Melbourne. When I asked her about the working condition, she said work was really easy. You can work when you feel like it. You can get paid a lot more than in Korea. But when she got to Australia, her experience was drastically different. I had to work night and day. I put on makeup and start at 8 a.m and worked until 1 a.m. the next day. Looking back, it was all exploitation, everything. This victim managed to escape, but there are still plenty of women like her under the control of organised crime bosses in Australia. Our undercover investigation into the motel syndicate in Queensland revealed the shocking conditions they're exposed to. How much for? For half a one, 150. One and one, 250. In some cases, it's clear they're living where they're working. One of the women we came across couldn't speak English and had to use Google Translate to communicate with our undercover. And on more than one occasion, desperate for a transaction, sex workers agreed to unprotected sex, prepared to do whatever they have to to accommodate a client. Trying to protect these women from exploitation is what drives Detective Inspector Brad Phelps. I think people yeah, really need to understand that these are some of the most vulnerable people in our society. They're in a foreign country, they don't speak our language, that they have no control over the work they're conducting. Um, they have no control over their clients. There's no health and safety around them or their clients. 
they really are being treated as the lowest of the low. Uh, and, you know, people are making massive profits from this exploitation. People like Bin Jun Shi. For months, we have been tracking a sex trafficking operation we believe he's running. But coming face to face with him isn't easy. After several attempts at contact, we finally get him on the phone. Hello, Bin Jun Shi. Who is this? My name is Nick McKenzie. I'm an Australian journalist, and I'm calling you about your business. At first, he plays dumb. Sorry? Your business running Asian sex workers across Australia. And I want to ask you... Then he claims it's a case of mistaken identity. Did you tell the Australians that you'd been to jail? I think you've got the wrong number. No, no, this is... Is this Bin Jun Shi? No. What's your name? Well, that was Bin Jun Shi, for sure. It was harder for education agent Do Won Kim to avoid our questions when we caught up with him, this time at a Melbourne cafe. Can you, can you, can you speak to me in English, Do Won? All these, all these women you bring to Australia, you know they're being, ex you know they're being exploited. I'm recording you, I'm asking you some questions. You've helped all these women come to Australia working for an organised crime no, no, syndicate. How do you justify that? No, 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 no. You can't record it like this because it's people recording this one and the people... It's just totally, totally legal to do this. How, no, I'm not, I'm not why, doing anything. Why have you helped so many women come to Australia? Can you ask, do one, can no, you answer no, the question? No, no, no. Do you know what happens to the women that you help come here? You've spoken about women being treated like cattle, sexual servitude and slavery, and hundreds of millions of dollars being earned by these organised crime syndicates behind or controlling these women. Why is it more being done to stop this trade? That's, that's a really difficult question. I think as law enforcement, there's only so much we can do. We need to look at that bigger picture uh, and then, you know, come up with strategies that are, are, are effective in targeting the highest level of this. Um, and that's, you know, an area that we can improve in law enforcement. We can't rest on our laurels. This offending will continue to occur until we can really tighten up around how these people access the country. Uh, if we can tighten up on that, then we're, we're half a chance. But former detective Kevin Forrest warns there's no time to waste when it comes to Bin Jun Shi. What would your message be to Australian authorities about the need to catch up with this guy? If you keep letting it go, it's only going to get bigger. It's only going to get bigger. Uh, and he's going to sit quietly making millions for himself and, and others elsewhere at the suffering of other people. Hello, I'm Sarah Arbo. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our Extra Minutes segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on ninenow.com.au and the Nine Now app.